Traders, AML, and with the people's uh, desire of trading cryptocurrencies. I believe all of us had our fair share of, uh, of trading cryptos and dealing with standard banks, right? They love us and we love them back. We saw that things can get really complicated even if you try and trade $100 on a crypto exchange with a standard bank. But the reason we're here today is not to say how bad the standard banks are, is to try and find solutions and common ground and see how we could do better. And for this, I have a man that uh, over a period of 20 years has launched and managed a number of businesses worldwide. From European-based trading entities to GCC-focused uh, asset management uh, companies. And his last venture was the formation of the Middle East largest investment firm, ADS Securities. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only, Philippe Ganem. Founder and Chairman at Spread Financial. Philip, welcome and thank you for accepting the challenge because it's a challenge. It's going to be a challenge. I'm here for you. All right, so in this panel, we're going to talk about the obvious. Yeah, how difficult it is for people to trade cryptocurrencies and do business with standard banks. Um, I'm going to share a short story with you. A couple of months back, I opened a new company, all right, in Cyprus. And I am, I like to think I'm a public uh, figure, especially having a YouTube channel and yeah, moderating these uh, kind of events. Now, I had difficulties opening a bank account. It took me a while, I did it eventually, but I had difficulties. So, I want to start by asking you, right, because I know you have a lot of experience with banking, how do you see standard banking versus the modern banking in 2020? It's a large question to answer because there isn't any definition yet, in my opinion, in terms of standard and modern, because evolution is happening as we speak. Uh, today, you have a few evolutions that, are, that we have to take in consideration. It's hardware and software evolution that are allowing uh, banks to mutate into more, so, more sophisticated and hence why we have a result of EMI licenses that are coming on board, more sophisticated entities that have implemented new technologies that are allowing people to open accounts. Now, you will feel a difference and we are feeling that difference between big banks asking certain customers, so their software is telling them that those customers are not viable or they're not making enough money from those customers, hence like UBS or others, which are cutting uh, customers from individuals to institutions. Now you have the lower end, uh, the middle, middle banks are gradually or evaluating or disappearing or consolidating. Now what is going to come on board is those new sophisticated companies that have implemented software and systems that will allow people to open accounts online corporate for corporate and for individuals and I know that a few companies are trying to do that. So definitely the standardization of banking as we know is going. We saw that it doesn't work. Certain countries neighbor to us have collapsed. So from capital control the banking uh, uh, completely destroyed because the standard banking of the way they used to work cannot cannot work anymore. From credit, from prime broker from personal loans, and the big element that is changing is compliance. Regulators, we are criticizing in general regulators, it's an easy thing to criticize regulators, but I think that we have to put in perspective the demands and the pressure that those regulators are having from business owners and from customers complaining or being scammed. We were talking about scam or issues, and hence why it is important not only to have a conversation with regulators, to have conversations with regulators, but also it is important for, for regulators to spend into education, to educate their staff, and to upgrade their technologies to enhance their systems. And what did we do to work more closely? Because you said we, we, we 
we should work together. What would we do to work more closely with the standardizer? In your view. First of all, you have to see if they want. This is one thing. Certain banks, center banks, have arrived to a level where the gap is so big between your reality and their reality. They cannot upgrade their softwares. They're too heavy to upgrade their staff. Uh, you know, they, they have issues that are long dated that they cannot deal with. So some banks are approaching and some banks are selling themselves. So if you have some banks that have enough data, it's all about data today. And more of those banks will grow if they understand how to mine their data and to understand how liquidity and information is important to surround the technology and education. If you spend on technology and education, this is where you're going to have a bank that can communicate to its people. It, it won't be able to communicate to customers if it doesn't operate its technology. If you want to go more in details, you cannot. The number of consumers is only going to increase. Yes. Your children, my children, our consumers, our clients. You have about 2 billion new humans that will most probably be become digital consumers. How do you deal with that? You can't deal with that as you are today, hence why you need to upgrade the technology to educate the people to start having a conversation with its clients. I know you deal with banks at the, the highest level possible. Um, and I feel that the banks started like a crusade against cryptocurrencies, against small companies, against uh, online companies. What's the bank's view of cryptocurrencies, Philip? Are they evil? Do they see cryptos as evil? Not all banks are like uh, Let's be realistic. Not all banks. Certain banks cannot deal with it. Certain banks, the management and the mindset. So you could go, uh, I, I live in Geneva, uh, and there are streets in Geneva that differentiate each other. Okay? You have one street, which is the standard private banking. They don't want to evaluate technology. They're happy, they have their customers coming in, but there is no conversation to have with them. But there are other, other factors that are taking in consideration that cryptocurrency is coming on board. Real currencies, like we saw today in the news, yuan, possibly the euro, all of those are going to be tokens. It's not possible for us to deal with the expansion of the economy if we don't tokenize currencies. And this is where you will have a cross between Bitcoin and Euro dollar, or uh, uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum with dollar yen. This is where we're going. We're going to go where a much more digitalized uh, industry that will only expand because the users will be much more. You know what I'm curious about? Very curious about? If, when the countries issue their own tokens, their own yes. coins, yeah, apparently those coins will be backed up by the government, if I'm not mistaken. I doubt. Some of them may try, possibly they will. What will be tokenized, certainly, you will certainly have an expansion of the NFT market. This is the next evolution for IPOs in my opinion. More than this? Much more. Oh my God. What you're saying is the oddest and, the, and where the blockchain technology and this new virtual world will take us to, to places we've never been before. Medically, medicine, infrastructure, banking, name it. Those, this is a new, the new magic. Technology was the new magic. This is where it's going. So this is like the internet was back in the, well, the 90s. It's the light. Oh, oh no. Much more than it. It's the light. This is where we're going in terms of evolution globally. A much more faster economy. Much more faster. The only thing that will not be streaming yet is your body for now. But we're already streaming. It's yeah, eight, uh, 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 I had a dispute on CNBC uh, last time regarding the explanation of the NFT, how do we make money? There are two ways. Of course, the valuation of those companies. And the second thing is you will have live promotions in a parallel world of a live economy that will be live 24 hours a day, seven days a week a live world parallel that people will grow and know only about it. Like our kids today, we used to turn pages. Yeah. Huh? Today they do like this. Tomorrow they will do this. This is what
what is the new economy to me? You, you consumers. But are we ready for this? Are we ready for this rapid expansion into the metaverse, for example? Into building avatars, into buying um, virtual land? I had an interview a couple of weeks back about buying virtual land and dressing up your avatar. And it made me chuckle, to be honest. It made me laugh. I was like, guys, who goes to work if we're busy building an avatar? He's the one ready for this. So I'll answer you in a cautious way and a brutal way. The first thing is, since COVID, we got digitalization implemented in our life much faster. Yes. So people that were not using digital assets or were not using instruments got to use them because they had to survive. They had to go to do their tests, they had to fill up their forms. All of those are new consumers we didn't know about. Now, on avatars and NFTs, those are markets, and I say again, for our consumers, and I've been saying it to all our consumers, could be on the trading side to the crypto side. Learn it, get to know it, take your time, be informed, educate yourself, or you will lose, or it's a toss of the coin. So there are lands to buy and nice marketing things to do. If you don't understand it, just don't do it. But this is part of the parallel economy that is coming on board, which is not new. We had the parallel economy. A lot of the stocks for trading and the valuations for tracing are parallel in virtual economies, in a certain way. All right. Now, back to my initial question. Um, and you mentioned it earlier on, education and cryptocurrencies. Do you think the bank personnel needs more education and information about cryptocurrencies? I, from the banking people that I've met in my career, a lot of them want to learn. A lot of them pushes their companies to teach them, to, to, for them to learn much more on how, what are they actually selling. Because a lot of people are coming into a bank, integrating a place and, and focusing straight. And this is where we need to spend on education to be sure we educate our staff. I, of course, you can always do better. So can I say that the whole the banking industry is under-educated? No. But you certainly have people that are like to be more educated. And how can we help them understand that, that many people mean no harm if they just want to trade a bit of crypto? Like we were saying earlier on, what harm can I do if I trade 300, 500 euros a month on, on Binance or Coinbase? Do, do I deserve to get a call from the bank manager or someone telling me, listen, what you're doing is not really okay? Then why my transaction goes to when I'm trying to deposit? Look, no, certain companies allow you to trade crypto. Work with them. If the bank that you deal with is not friendly with crypto, wait until they become friendly or just go somewhere else. Because it, it effectively, certain compliance departments are quite brutal in just shutting you down as a customer yeah. because you dealt with crypto. So, do they need education on crypto? Do they want to have education on crypto? Certain, certain people do. What I would advise is that regulators and central bank push education to those banks and explain them how they can enhance their softwares and their systems to be able to be receptive to you crypto users. I don't know if you were here because Nick asked a very interesting question uh, earlier on. Um, now, is this coming, is this an issue with banks blocking average people from, from doing business with crypto exchanges? Does it come from the central bank or it has to do with every bank in particular? We live in a very volatile world of news regarding crypto. One day China closes it down, one day India opens it up, one day India closes it up, one day Dubai opens it up. So it's a bit, a bit confusing. So it is again very important for central bank and regulators to pass through the information to through regulated entities of what they can sell and buy and how do they express it to their customers. And at the end is of the risk of the bank. Some banks do not feel comfortable, but I'm sure that compliance softwares and investing into compliance inside banks and institutions will allow you to onboard more customers that will trade crypto because they will trade crypto, that's it. Even the banks will, will have to trade crypto. They will hold in their portfolio, which there are some of them, you know, you have a lot of banks that today have open desks for that. Right, now, regulation. And it's profitable because the spreads are quite large compared to the foreign exchange spreads 
the strength of the crypto is quite important and it allows you to build big companies again. Very well said. In terms of regulation, let's say a global regulation will be issued, yeah? And cryptocurrencies will be regulated on a, on a global level. Do you think the banks will finally accept the fact that some people like to try and make a bit of profit or speculating on cryptocurrencies? Are they going to open up? Now we're, we're focused on cryptocurrency. Yeah. Uh, it's not, again, this is not the only thing that I look into. Customers want more product to trade. There is going to be more instruments coming on board. Technology is again allowing you to have more instruments that will be traded. So crypto or others, new things are going to come on board. So today it's true, you have a lot of tokens and coins that are coming on board that are scammed or very dangerous yeah. that you trade on. So am I for this new technology that is coming on board? Am I for blockchain or tokenized currency coming on board further on? Of course, yes, I believe it's safer. We can control it better. We can understand where it goes. And we can expand international, how do we say, markets, and it will give another layer of profits for us to be able to spend much more time on education to have a better world. The tipping point of having an elevated economy, because you said something very right, are we ready? The only way to be ready is to spend into education, and the way to spend into education is to spend into technology to push that education. Yes, very well said. But do people want to learn? Because if you get 10 people, if you line up 10 people... They want to make money. Exactly. And you ask them, do you want more money? They will say yes. Do you want more power? Yes. Do you want longer hair? Yes. Do you want more education? No. Yeah. I had a, a, an education company. I, I tried. I tried. Once I, I left the, the financial markets, I started educating people on what financial markets really are and what they have to offer. It. I was surprised when I saw that people are not really interested in going that deep into into education. They want to know how to protect their funds. Fair enough. How not to get scammed. Fair enough. But if you ask someone to want to to understand truly how to create portfolios, how to work with all asset classes, how to mix, you know, heavy technology with heavy knowledge, they're going to say no. This is a problem of majority. It's a, and, and, and highly educated people don't want to be more educated, or certain people are interested in it. But this is again the work of sophisticated institutions to be sure they nail the way they send the correct message, which is indirectly education. When you talk about stop losses, when you talk about margin calls, when you talk about crypto wallets, when you talk about the use of your platform, this is already the first and second layer of education. Deeper is their choice, but you, you have to do a job, which you're doing even yourself and any of those entities that I'm reading around this, uh, this area today where we are this expo, is they're trying to push a message. This mission message is educating. How further can we go? where we have to invest and spend money on. Yeah, how do you see the banking in the next 20 years? That the standard banking system, what's your view? How is it going to look like? Already, it's going to be much more simplified. Uh, artificial intelligence is going to allow us to study precedents. Precedents in names, in, user, in users, and a discussion of global data between all softwares, which will allow you to implement in your bank a compliance or a CRM system that will allow you to go faster into implementing uh, and onboarding customers. So, today, they do, the standard banks are spending into uh, CRMs, are spending in compliance, they're regulating their technology, some of them will be consolidated, they won't be able to last, some of them will, be, will need to consolidate, and leaders will be people that will have their own platform, their own technology, or at least white table sophisticated platform where they can put their touch of services in it that will allow customers to, to, be, to use their software. You have a lot of hope in the future of the standard banking. <laughs> you know, I've been 22 years in that industry, and when there were no expos and this, and since 22 years, uh, I had more than one 
1.2 million customers that traded. Uh, uh, now it's small, but at that time it was it was big. Uh, and I was always optimistic about this industry. Uh, I, I, I helped to found a financial center in Abu Dhabi, uh, and we built few two extraordinary companies. And today, what I'm really focused on is, on, of course, quite financial. That will be, in my in my opinion, one of the leading. Uh, online trading banking platform uh, in, in that industry. I hope so. Very nice. So we can find common ground between banks, demand, and innovation. You will find yes, of course. You will. Find. It's happening. People are working very hard to establish those kind of institutions. You have very positive founders. A lot of money is being invested in that industry. Big numbers. I think some of those people know what they're doing yet. All right, you're giving me my confidence back in, in the standard banking system. Don't go to one bank, but you should go generally to do yourself, yourself a homework where you would be pushed back. And if you're pushed back, just go to the other one. You not, you, not all of them will accept your idea of banking. So it is your duty to try what is there, read what their information they have, Look at some of the reference, so much social media, social social discussions that are happening about this bank or this bank. Get informed and then choose the right bank. Open one account, two accounts, and you'll see how it goes. I saw how it goes. Luckily, I managed to open one. Now, do we have any questions from the audience, guys? Because we have more champagne bottles. Are you here for the champagne? <laughs> All right. Let me get the microphone. Where's the microphone? There it is. All right. Let's meet uh, halfway up. There we go. All right. One, two, three. Okay. Um, thank you for your speech. Uh, I love for your questions and your answers. And my uh, main question is: Are you not afraid about uh, CBDC according to the banking sector? Because actually, uh, CBDC could be private banking killer. Uh, what are your expectations, predictions about CBDC affecting your sector and banking sector? Thank you. Nice question. I don't see it a threat. I don't see it a threat and I, I don't think I can elaborate more on the answer. Well, one thing that I can tell you is that private banking is mutating into electronic banking. And it is important that banks offer enough product to have assets under management to allow customers to allocate some of their portfolio, could be crypto or, or their real portfolio, into robotic trading. Some of them would like to be going there. So private banking is really evaluating. But again, certain customers do like to have still a contact with, with, with humans, but it would be difficult on the broker side, but most probably on the banking side. But again, banks are being very, um, uh, hungry in terms of deposits if they want to have a conversation. So it will be very difficult for you to have a conversation with a banker if you come with a small deposit. This is where I'm saying about technology, where technology will be the ro robots will be able to answer you the majority of your questions and fetch for the right answer for you. All right, one more question, guys. There we go, we have one more question there. Now you see, I should get that the previous expression. If you are in super you like yeah. there we go. We have a bottle of champagne there, everyone. There we go. Now, next uh, question, please. Uh, hello. Thank you for your speech. Let's hear your name. I don't drink champagne. I prefer coffee. All right. Uh, NFTs are here to stay. For example, um, there was a, a small picture icon digital that was sold for 92 million. Also, companies, game companies, Ubisoft, uh, Electronic Arts, they are integrating into their games. So we have an NFT platform here. However, I'm going back to the point you mentioned before that banks, not banks, governments will make uh, Euro, for example, they use dollar, they will become competitors to crypto. You did mention that, is that correct? Tokenized, tokenized. Tokenized, not competitive, tokenized. 
Good, because I believe that uh, at the end of the day is who is who has the control. I mean, yes, they will become tokenized, but they will not compete directly through the existing or new cryptocurrencies. That because it's uh, always about the control. It's, that's the reason why they thrive because they are not under any specific government. Somebody else, or maybe none, has the control. This is what I. Mean. Thank you for the question. What I would like you to be aware of is that the control will be the control of those entities that are actually brokering exchanges. So this is the, the main control or regulation that will happen. Uh, but again, it's a very immature market. It's very new. We need to know more precedents and incidents that need to come to allow us to do a better job. And um, so it will not be a competition but maybe users will be more comfortable into a tokenized euro to do what they're doing in terms of transactions. Now, in terms of the crypto, crypto took the job of cash. You know, the cash had a big element of paper money, and, and you still have countries that will deal with paper money as we wanted to talk about the truth and, and talk about it bluntly. You still have transactions or commissions or black market, if you want, that was in cash. This cash is disappearing. So crypto, not all of it, but some of it, 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 it still works on those dark pools and uh, unregulated exchanges. And this is where the, the regulators are looking at, because this is what is happening. But how much can they control? It's still going to be very challenged. Because we as humans, and some of us, we still want this uncontrolled market. May I add something on the, on the topic? He wants coffee. Oh, coffee. 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 Oh, okay. Coffee. We'll make it happen. No problem. Coffee is on. Right. No champagne. On the same on the same topic, if governments and countries will issue their own coin, their own token, that I believe is the first sign that we're going to get rid of the fiat currency at some point. Is that correct? I know it's a tough one. As long as you have this dark side and this un decentralized, democratized, and this is something I believe in, uh, it would it would take time. Yes. But there is a sign. They are trying to adapt. They are trying, trying to, adapt. to adapt, but I think they will focus more more into regulated the regulated and to regulate those entities to do a better job in compliance and understanding their consumers than just pushing it away from, from that. All right. Okay. That's it, it was an absolute pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.